I love you, Billy. It's in the first shot. I mean, she's got the best face of anybody on screen. There is an inherent intelligence and goodness that comes out of her, and I think the audience responds to that. There are certain actors that are just, they're like, to watch them work is like watching a battleship sail into harbor and just move its guns around and fire off the round and hit the target and put the guns away and move away and without, as though it's, it's effortless. And she can do anything. I mean, she can do anything. I first heard about it through my agent, who um, knew that I was greedy for work. And I was uh, playing in Central Park in The Taming of the Shrew, in Free Shakespeare in Central Park in New York. And I was shooting Woody Allen's movie, too. And. Uh, but my agent set me up anyway because I only had two weeks of work on Woody's movie and he sent me to Stanley Jaffe who said, you know, how do, why, how, how do you think you can, you can't shoot someone else's movie and, and, and be in a play and be in our movie. This is a very important movie. And I said, yeah, but I just have a little bitty part. I'm just in the very beginning and the very big end. And you know, if you work it around it so I can work on Woody's movie in the middle. You know, I was a repertory actress, which means you work on a lot of different plays at the same time, and I thought I could do it. We had a conversation about what qualities we needed in the character of Joanna. And first and foremost was she had to be likable immediately, because she was going to do, within the first five minutes of the film, the most heinous thing a woman can do, which is leave a child behind. And you had to not just write her off at the end of the picture when she came back. I think if there's anything you know, that runs through all my work, all my characters. It's, it's that I've had a relationship with them where I feel I have to defend them. I thought she was a rat in a maze, you know? She had no choice. Sick people don't often have a choice. And I thought she was mentally ill, you know, ill, depressed, sort of out of control. I'm leaving you. Honey, please. I, I, I can't hear. What? Okay, you too. Thanks a lot. See you tomorrow. You guys eat? Ted, I'm leaving you. Ted. Keys. What? Here are my keys. Here's my American Express card. Here's my Bloomingdale's credit card. Here's my checkbook. I've taken $2,000 out of our savings account because that's what I had in the bank when we first got married. Was she suicidal? She was on the verge of a breakdown, for sure, as a character. And recognizing that and not wanting to be a bad mother, she did what the greatest mother would do. She loved her child enough to leave him. Come on, just tell me what I did. That's all. Just tell me what I did that's it's so not terrible. You. It's not then you. what is it? It's me. It's my fault. All she knew was that her life lay on the other side of the gangplank. She had to walk, get off that, that ship. And she didn't know how it was going to turn out. Very often when you look up with people that are interior people, you don't know why they do anything. You can't, they don't, do not explain themselves. I mean, that's, a lot of it is that she was locked up inside of herself, but I knew that I could, I had the chance to come back at the end and explain who this terribly imploded person was. He's better off without me. Joanne, please. And I don't love you anymore. Where are you going? I don't know. Dustin was amazing with that little boy. He really was. He set out to make him fall in love with him. Going in there. Did I have to wash my hair twice a week when Mom was here? I don't care what you had to do when Mom... Did I, Dad? Did I? Are you listening to me? Okay, we'll talk about it tonight when I get home, okay? Come here, give me a kiss. Hey. What? A terrific kid. That was the, the, the critical moment, is that Meryl comes back and says, I want my kid back right at the moment when I've become father slash mother. I want my son. You can't have him. Don't get defensive. Don't don't try to bully me. I'm okay? not getting or defensive. Get... 
Who walked out of the house 15 months ago? I don't care. Joe. I am still his mother. Yes, from 3,000 miles away, and just because you sent a few postcards, it gives stopped. you the right to come back him. here? I never stopped wanting him What and makes you so sure he wants you? What makes you so sure he doesn't want me? That was her scene. And all I'm hearing when I'm doing the scene with her is, I want Billy. And we rehearse it a few times, and she's, you know, it's her scene. But I remember going out to bed and saying, something's wrong, it's not working. I see, he says, what is it? I says, I don't know. I said, there's just something, I'm really angry by the end. I just, I know that I just don't, I don't like, I just, I am really pissed. Don't talk to me that way. I have anticipated okay, look, this I don't want to get into this. Look, okay. you're going to have to do what you're going to have to do, and I'm going to have to do what I'm doing. I'm very sorry about this. Okay, you can just I do what you have to do. The, the shattered glass in the restaurant scene was completely Dustin's uh, invention and, and, and spontaneity. I think it was an improvised moment. It was the best of what improvisation can be. To the cameraman, I said, if yes, I see that glass there on the table, you talk like convicts in the joint. You know, you don't, you don't want the guards to hear you. You know, see that? Uh, he says, yeah. I says, okay, just tell me if I whack that before I leave, and I'm not going to whack it, I'll be careful, I'm going to whack it at the brick wall, because I don't want to hit her or anything like that. It's not a breakaway, you know, it's a real, you know, have you got it in the shot? Just move it a little bit to the left. <laughs> so I, I go back there, you know, he says, and I'm, I'm looking at him and he's going. You know, nobody knows what we're doing. So he's ready for it. And Benton knows, and I'm saying, I want, I want one more, I want to do something. And Meryl knows I want to do something, and people, you know, but they don't know what. And she's not expecting any of this nonsense. And we do it. <coughs> Felt wonderful. And she really, I mean, and she's not acting. But, you know, Meryl does a lot of, 99% of her work is not acting either. So, I mean, she's spontaneous, but she was very spontaneous here. And I remember she was pissed. I found out much later while we were doing the publicity when people talk about this that he was really, that he was mad at me. And I didn't, I mean, he, Dustin, was mad at me, Meryl. And I, I didn't know that. I still don't know why. I read the, you know, some of the stuff that came through and he was doing the interviews and saying that he was so furious with me and I was playing a game with him and just like, playing tennis with, you know, Pete Sampras or something, you gotta be on your game. And, you know, I don't know how to play tennis and I wasn't in a, in a, a competition. I'm sure I was acting out on her uh, throughout the movie, stuff that I was feeling toward the wife uh, that I was divorcing in real life. It was the first time I ever made a movie where I was living through what I was acting unlike a writer or a painter, let's say, who gets up in the morning and can exercise what they're going through. You know, we get stuff in the mail. So, you know, this, it's quite unusual to be getting a divorce, the f f my, my, you know, my first and only divorce. At the time, I'm shooting a movie about a man getting a divorce. And people said to me later, it must be very, very painful. I said, no, it was great. It's like Justin saying, I feel terrific, because there was, it was a wonderful feeling. I mean, just show up. <laughs> just show up and turn the camera. <laughs> he transformed his anger into the glass instead of me. So <laughs> I guess I should be grateful. 